Before we dive into this, I really encourage you to check out the full read from the CMA and not just look at the headlines or whatever, but to really try to at least understand what the CMA thing, their decision this morning to block the Activision Blizzard deal for Microsoft. You might have heard, you might not have been paying attention to this deal. I know I got a lot of people coming by from that Zelda compilation reaction I did, which by the way, thank you very much for that. This is a big deal because not only is like, is it probably the most historically big gaming acquisition that has ever happened in our lives, but the CMA is a group for the UK that kind of led the charge on, hey, let's actually take some time to look at this deal. Let's take some time to look at this deal more than we did when uh, Amazon acquired MGM or when Disney acquired Fox or when so on and so forth. Even with Xbox themselves, when Microsoft acquired ZeniMax. For some reason, this case, the CMA was like, okay, let's look into this. <laughs> and maybe it's because it's a tech company, who knows? But the, the reasonings that they posted, I think is very interesting. And maybe I'll try to sum it up here, but I especially want to give you my take as well as how this will affect you. And you know, whether you're into Microsoft or whether you're not, we have a timeline video going over that too. Because a lot of people are going to look at this and instantly be like, holy shit, <laughs> no, I'm not going to get Diablo 4 on Game Pass, which is potentially a case now. We'll see. This is kind of a big deal because the CMA, like I said, they led the charge for the FTC suing to block this first from the USA. The EU for Europe, the EU commission, I forget, they are taking a lot more time to look into this deal too because the CMA first, I think it was in September, they were like, hey, we want to take a lot more time to look at this and start an investigation. They were the first ones to leave that charge and even though they issued like the statement saying, okay, finally after all these months, we are not that worried about the console competition. What we're really worried about is the cloud competition. And that's why I really encourage you to read this full thing that they issued this morning which was a morning that Twitter <laughs> went nuts. And admittedly, I did too. I went to bed last night, like like Christmas morning, and I'm just like, oh boy, I'm going to wake up, and most likely the deal will close. I fully you know, understood that there's a chance that they could block the deal, but I'm just like, I am going to wake up and see the internet explode. Sa Santa, <laughs> Santa legalities, Christmas, are going to show up in, in the room under the tree. And hopefully the deal passes so we can just move on from talking about this bullshit. <laughs> but the least likely event happened where a lot of people projected the CMA would approve the deal. But I woke up this morning to see Destin, Yang Ye, Jason Schreier, a bunch of people just like, oh no, they blocked it. <laughs> and then you read the article as to why, basically being that they are very afraid of cloud gaming and how this would like really they bring up some good points in the article okay and i was a person personally i'm still super for the deal passing why mostly because i'm selfish and the more thing that more things that microsoft owns the more things that are on game pass because i love game pass i want more on it as a consumer if they raise the price by five bucks honestly it's still worth it to me so that's my personal take totally fine if you disagree i'm not one of those people that's going to give you shit if you disagree because we can all have our own takes but that's like, if I summed up mine, that's what I want this deal for. Not to overthrow PlayStation or anybody else. I just, as a consumer, want more on my service. But the CMA is worried about the cloud gaming situation because while Microsoft has promised all these things, you know, like we gave Nintendo a 10 year, we gave Nvidia a 10 year, we gave these other cloud people that I forget their names a 10 year, like we're giving everybody 10 year contracts. So what's the problem? We are literally making Activision's games accessible on 150 million more devices than they were on before. So what's the problem? The CMA doesn't like how there's a lot of defined expansions to these people you know, or offers to these people. They don't like how there's a lot of defined deals. There's a lot of defined, like which games will come to these platforms. They don't like that there's all these defined parameters and they want that cloud market, which is rapidly expanding, which is true. Like the cloud gaming market, it's probably gonna be the next big thing. Maybe not this next gen, but it very well could be. But for sure, like 10 years from now, it is going to be the thing. 
And if Microsoft ever randomly expanded when those 10 years are up, then they will own the cloud gaming market. They will own it. In the current time, they also don't like how they will need to constantly or somebody's going to need to constantly regulate all these defined 10 year deals. These defined they use that word a lot. These defined games that are coming to these platforms. They don't like that. <laughs> They want the cloud gaming market to just freely expand and compete with each other. And for Microsoft not to be handing things out to everybody while they grow, but also to just let it happen naturally. If Activision Blizzard wants to come into cloud gaming, they want that to naturally happen and be a decision that Activision Blizzard does and not Microsoft making them do. So that's essentially what they're getting at. Like they respected a lot of the things that Microsoft did to help, you know, calm a lot of their fears. But unfortunately, they still have to vote to block it. The big problem with this for Microsoft, at least, obviously, it's a big problem because they don't want to, you know, jump into a lot of lawsuits, which they now are probably going to because they're going to motion for appeal, which I've heard appeals can take years to do. (laughs) But it also gives the FTC ammo because the FTC was like the first to vote to block this deal from America. And they were probably waiting to see what the CMA and EU would do. But now that the CMA has voted to block it, now the FTC is like, okay, let's go forward. And that's going to cause even more conflicts for Microsoft, which we're still going to be talking about this. And that's what bugs me. But the other big problem for them is that if they choose to go forward with this, in that timeline thing I mentioned in July, that's kind of the do or die. Because in July... They have like a termination fee, if you will. Imagine like, you know, you rent from an apartment, a condo, a room, whatever, or you have a contract with Verizon or Xfinity, your internet provider. You have like a contract or a lease. And when you leave that early, then you pay a termination fee, right? You have to pay a $300 termination fee if you leave your lease early kind of a thing. That's essentially what Microsoft's having to do with this ABK deal if it does not close by July. Because if they choose not to close this deal, if they back out and be like, all right, this is too much trouble, we can't do it, and it seems like everybody's blocking it anyway, so unfortunately it's not going to work out. They have to pay a three-something billion dollar termination fee. Okay? Three-something billion. That's a a hefty chunk of change. They essentially have to pay almost as much as Disney paid to buy Star Wars. And if it goes past July, that termination fee is going to go up. I don't remember how much. I think it might have been seven billion, but it's going to go up. So it's like a big risk. And it's like, okay, can we really beat these guys in court? Which a lot of people think that they will. But a lot of people also thought that (laughs) that the CMA thing would be approved. Right. A lot of like a lot of people projected that the CMA would be like, yeah, uh, they're going to pass it. A lot of like industry analysts and stuff, and I'm not talking about like gaming journalists, I'm talking about like actual market people that know way more than you or me. They thought that the deal was going to go through and CMA would approve it. So if <laughs> a lot of people say like, well, they're going to win in court, I, that those same analysts say, well, they're going to win in court. But they, you thought this too. You thought the CMA would approve it and they did it. So you, when you say that they're going to win in court, now it's like, are they though? <laughs> Against the CMA and FTC? That begs the question, (laughs) one, how much longer are we going to be talking about this? A long time. I don't talk about this. I only talk about if something big happens. And to me, this is a big piece of news. And also, what's going to happen to, like I said, on the selfish side, I want the deal to go through because I want Activision Blizzard games on Game Pass so I can just have more to play, even though there's too much to play right now. Holy crap. I'm trying to decide between Redfall, last case of Benedict Fox and Redfall all coming out in four days. But maybe that's the reason why like CMA was a bit worried about this in terms of cloud gaming, because console gaming, they're probably like, yeah, no, Nintendo's good. PlayStation's good. We're not worried about that. We're worried about the cloud gaming thing. And if you have Activision Blizzard stuff, then it's going to totally just in the future dominate. Even if you make these defined deals, You are just going to be completely dominating that market. You could charge more. You can make certain devices to lock people in. It just kind of sucks because 
two reasons. One, on that selfish side, again, I want Diablo 4 on Game Pass. I want to be able to play Call of Duty games through Game Pass because I will probably never buy a Call of Duty game, but I'll try them out if they're on Game Pass. I want that. A lot of people want that. We want our value, the, the greatest value in gaming to be even higher so we can get more from it and to see the other guys try to compete with it. But on the other side of things, there's a whole fan war bullshit that we're just going to see so many... I call them flag waivers. I hate to use the Oni and bot thing. I hate those so much. They're going to be in the comments of this video. <laughs> but I just, I get so tired of that. And this case just going on is so frustrating. And I just never want to know about these deals again. But, you know, we're going to know because nothing is hidden from the world. And I think that's why they announced this deal because they knew it would get out eventually with how big it is. But I just, I just really wish. <laughs> We just never knew about it and could just one day have been surprised and spent the two years that this deal took to close just not knowing about it until it closed. <laughs> I don't want to know about it anymore going forward. What if this doesn't go through? That's really the thing I would want to chat about, which is probably a separate, separate topic. But, you know, what if the deal goes doesn't go through? What does Microsoft do? You know, is Activision and Blizzard going to be more enticed to work with them than Sony after all the drama? And... Like, what would Sony's response be? Would they try to lock down Activision Blizzard? Not acquire, but, you know, keep up what they're dealing, making contracts or whatever that's similar to the contracts they they do with Square Enix to lock down their content. I don't know. It just kind of opens up a whole new ball game, And I really wonder if Microsoft will just stop playing nice guy. You know, if if you really want us to not acquire things, if you really want us to not own things, then fine. We're going to have to pay that $3 billion or $7 billion if they go past July. And we're going to put that leftover $60 billion that we didn't get my, that we didn't give Activision Blizzard into outbidding Sony to make all these partner deals that they keep doing. We didn't want to do that because we don't want to do that to people we don't own. But we're going to do that because we kind of have our hands forced now. And we got $60 billion to just do that with. That's probably, again, that's a separate video. Let me know if you'd want to do that in the comments. And yeah, just let me know your thoughts, because this is kind of a really big deal, and I am just want us to be over with this. I don't even care at this point. If the deal fails or if it goes through, I don't care. I just want it over.